Yes, as uh, Brother Job said, I will be beginning with uh, Bibliology. But before we launch into Bibliology proper, I want to remind you that uh, I will be covering several areas of systematic theology, of which Bibliology is one. And not only it is one, Bibliology is the foundation of systematic theology. So um, initially, today, I will begin with an introduction to theology and then to branches of theology. And after the introduction is over, we will go into bibliology proper. Many people have heard, or almost every Christian has heard the word theology. But when they hear the word theology, they equate the word theology with all kinds of uh, theoretical speculation. While a lot of theoretical speculation is part of theology, that is not exactly what theology is. The main theology or the main bulk of theology is something else. And the word theology comes from two Greek words, theos, God, logos, word, discussion about God is theology. And of course, for a Christian, there is only one source of information about God, that is Bible. And therefore, discussion of God, his dealings, and also his uh, word based upon the Bible is theology. It is based upon a command. The development of theology is based upon a command found in the Bible. Actually, not one command. It is found throughout the Bible. But the most well-known verse in relation to the development of theology is 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, so it is a verse known to all of us, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Here, rightly dividing, uh, though King James Version says rightly dividing, many other English translations have used other words, but King James gives an accurate translation of the Greek word, which is orthotomio, and orthotomio means cutting straight, cutting in a proper way. We know when a young man or a, when a young girl cuts a cake for the first time, they are unable to cut pieces which are all equal. Some will be very large and some will be very small. But gradually they learn how to cut them into equal pieces. In the same way, to divide the scripture into various categories is called orthotomio or rightly dividing the word of truth. Right from the first century, the church took orthotomio, dividing the word of truth, very seriously. And for that, they developed a lot of tools some of which are used even today by us. For example, Bible concordances, where you can search for a given word throughout the scripture. And Strong's exhaustive concordance is known to all of us. If not, it should be known to us. The only difference is that today Strong's exhaustive concordance is available on the computer, whereas uh, in my childhood, we had to handle a very heavy volume. So right from the first century itself, people started studying the word, word of God. They started collecting, sifting, sorting, and then analyzing them. Because we find that on a given subject, there may be 100 verses, and out of them, maybe 50 of them throw light upon different portions on that sub of that subject. All of them have to be combined to arrive at a correct picture. Uh, also, uh, in the scripture, we, not uh, we notice that oftentimes the same word is used with multiple meanings. 
for example we all talk about salvation when we talk of salvation we are talking about salvation by grace through faith but there are other usages also for example the scripture says work out your salvation when the scripture commands believers to work out their salvation that is not talking about salvation by grace through faith and when the lord lord jesus the child jesus was, was taken to the temple the same there took jesus into his lap blessed him and said lord today i have seen your salvation their salvation represents the savior not salvation by grace through faith so when we collect diff- verses related to the same subject from throughout the bible when we sift them when we sort them then we are able to come to conclu- clear conclusions on all these subjects including the same word which is used in the scripture with multiple meanings this has been going on now for 2000 years and in these 2000 years of sifting sorting collecting collating christians who have who have been studying the scripture diligently have found that the entire scripture after collecting collating sifting sorting and after deduction everything can be split into 11 roughly 11 categories these are the 11 branches of systematic theology it is called systematic theology because in a very systematic manner we have obeyed the command of the lord to rightly divide we rightly divided them we sifted them we sorted them we collated them and then we found out the deductions that are to be made from them not only the deductions that are to be made from them these deductions are compared with each other many people uh, not everyone may have a clear understanding of every subject but when people when christians those who sift and sort those who collate when they compare with each other things become more clear and with that in uh, once these things became clear 11 major divisions in theology appeared and these 11 major divisions are i'll read fast and then i will take them one by one the major divisions are apologetics bibliology anthropology theology proper christology pneumatology hamartiology soteriology angelology ecclesiology and eschatology lord willing the outline that i am using which is in front of me will eventually be made available to you in electronic book format so you are not going to lose anything at the same time if any one of you is taking notes i would encourage you to take your own notes because taking notes um stimulates our brain to assimilate information faster and in greater depth later you can uh, uh, you can supplement your own notes with these notes when they shall be passed on to you through the turk website let me come back to these 11 then the first one is apologetics the english word apologetics confuses many into thinking that perhaps we are making apology for something uh, not at all actually this word apologetics comes from the greek word apologia or apologia correct pronunciation apo means face to face logia means speaking and the word apologetics comes comes from peter where we we where we read that um be ready to give a reply give a response give an argument to those who ask you a reason concerning your faith so in apologetics theology tries to present a reason for our faith the second one is bibliology biblios means books bibliology means the science of the book here only one book is in mind and that is the bible 
bibliology handles the subject of exactly what the scripture says about itself and exactly what we have to believe thank you kamal uh, kamal is uh, posting many of these points in the margin which are visible to me they may be visible to some of you thank you very much for that help bibliology deals with bible the word of god exactly what the word of god is and exactly what the word of god says about itself the third is anthropology anthros means man and usually the suffix ology is added to study so anthropology is the study of man based upon scripture the fourth is theology proper theology as i said theos logos theology proper is study of god what does the bible say about god about his existence about his uh, attributes the fifth is christology as is obvious from the name christology talks about christ jesus christ the pre incarnate christ the incarnate christ and also christ in his resurrection and christ in future the stick sixth is pneumatology pneuma means spirit and pneumatology deals with holy spirit holy spirit is a very major subject in the scripture a subject about which many many people are trying to confuse the present generation so pneumatology sets all of that straight the seventh is hamarshiology hamarshia means sin and hamarshiology deals with sin its effect and its solution in human life the eighth one is soteriology hamarshiology uh, the branch which deals with sin soteriology the branch of theology which deals with salvation soter means savior soteriology uh, the works of the savior the ninth is very interesting the ninth division of theology is angelology generally angelology means study of angels and also study of fallen angels at times angelology is split into two angelology and also demonology where satan and his angels are studied but generally books on systematic theology use only one title angelology and it is understood that since the demons and satan are fallen angels they can also be included in angelology the 10th is ecclesiology ecclesiology comes from ecclesia and ecclesia means church the called out ones and ecclesiology deals with church doctrines a doctrine that is unique to the new testament period there was no church before new testament and there was no revelation about church before new testament and there shall be no church after rapture the 11th division of systematic theology is eschatology future things most of us when we think of future things we think only of prophecies related to the future that is wrong actually eschatology started in the garden of eden when god said i will put enmity between you and the serpent that was the first statement in eschatology and almost one third of the scripture is eschatology uh, starting from isaiah up to malachi everything is eschatology in addition to that there are many eschatological passages in all the other old testament books and also in the new testament books these are 11 divisions of systematic theology of these two are foundational one christian apologetics where we discuss 
the reason for our faith you will get a lot of apologetics here in tarc lot of faculty members who love apologetics and i'm sure that you you will get a good dose of apologetics in the coming days apologetics is the number one foundation of theology and number two is bibliology because actually bibliology is number one but because of practical reasons apologetics is always placed as number one and bibliology comes after that bibliology is so important because unless we know exactly what we believe about the bible exactly what the bible is our theology is going to be confused for example is there revelation outside the bible we know that bible is holy spirit inspired revelation but is there revelation outside the bible if someone says that there is revelation outside the bible then naturally the way he develops theology will be not only from the bible but also from quran from bhagavad gita from the vedas from the avesta of persians and also from buddhist and jainist and also uh, tao and shinto scriptures but someone who says that the 66 books of the bible are the only holy spirit inspired books in this world for him bibliology means something else you may ask uh, brother johnson uh, it is a shocking statement are there christians who believe that there are there is revelation outside the bible my quick answer is yes and uh, as we proceed with the uh, systematic theology i will mention something about that at the right place so apologetics is foundation number 1 bibliology is foundation number 2 your the turk faculty on apologetics he will recommend the right books in christian apologetics i want to mention one book because i have a special interest in that that book is in malayalam i am the architect i am the chief architect of this book and it was published in malayalam language about uh, 20 years ago the book is out of print but recently we got it completely done by dpp and lord willing we might come out with a digital print of this book and if it becomes available i will men- i will mention here in these classes so that those who are interested in malayalam textbook on systematic uh, on apologetics might be able to buy a copy coming to systematic theology okay and now coming now to bibliology there are hundreds of books on bibliology some are very highly technical some are highly simple i have given much attention to bibliology in my life because of my love for apologetics and i have found that after going through hundreds of books i have found that the best book the easiest to read the one that you can enjoy most the one that is not too technical at the same time one that is not children stuff is the inspiration and authority of scripture rene packe this is a actually uh, a recent book still in copyright otherwise i could have given co- uh, photo copies to you but i am sure that in mumbai you will be able to find some bookshop or some second hand bookshop from which you can buy this book and in case you want to supplement my classes with a textbook i strongly recommend the packe 
it's the best book that i have found coming now to systematic theology there are hundreds of one volume works on systematic theology some very ancient some very recent most of them would be 1200 to 2500 pages long some of them might be multi volume books but actually a beginning student doesn't need all of them or he doesn't have to go to he or she doesn't have to go to such massive volumes for those who are those who want to study systematic theology as the first introduction to systematic theology i want to recommend this book in understanding b men by tc hammond in understanding b men by tc hammond uh, this book is uh, out of print but it is also out of copyright so very soon i might be able to find a, a pdf copy of this book since it is out of copyright is it is already in public domain and i very strongly recommend that if you are a first time student of theology source this book this is a 206 page book that would be sufficient as a primary introduction those of you who would uh, love to have a malayalam book here is the first systematic theology in malayalam i am the architect of this book and this book is already out of print but since i am the copyright holder i can give you photocopies we also got it dtp recently so we might be producing our own digital copies so no need of photocopy digital copies are as good as offset copies so these are some of the resources there is one more resource that i want to mention related to systematic theology that many of you would find useful and that is the history of christian doctrine the history of christian doctrine by louis burkhoff the book is out of copyright it is in public domain and therefore one can photocopy it without any copyright violation burkhoff has also written a one volume systematic theology almost eight sections of that systematic theology it doesn't have burkhoff doesn't have a portion on apologetics but from bibliology up to angelology his systematic theology is very good once you are through with tc hammond then if you want to chew a little more harder stuff a little more comprehensive stuff i recommend systematic theology one volume by louis burkhoff uh burkhoff has a strange uh, ecclesiology and eschatology i don't re- recommend ecclesiology and eschatology portions of this book but the remaining eight sections are very good as a second reading of theology and history of christian reading as a very uh, useful book the question you may ask why did you recommend a history of christian theology there is a reason as an introductory work i introduce christian a history of christian doctrine because systematic theology did not come to us all at once even the scripture did not come to us all at once it took 1500 years approximately 1500 years from genesis up to revelation to be written so the revelation divine revelation holy spirit inspired revelation itself took 1500 years to arrive in a written form and therefore those who try to systemize things 
systematize things systematize information before the new testament was complete they were able to do a lot but they could come to a conclusion or by they i am not talking about people who started writing systematic theology hundreds of years before the new testament by they i mean uh, people who study doctrines people who study theology they were able to come to a mature conclusion only after the arrival of revelation but even after the arrival of revelation rightly dividing the word of truth it was a difficult job multiple problems they had number one all the old testament books were in the form of scrolls quintels in weight as i talked to you about 25 25 kilometers from this place there is a jewish synagogue in which there is a copy of the five books of moses i would guess that it is about 150 to 200 kilograms in weight that being the situation sifting and sorting of information was not easy even after the completion of the new testament all the 39 books of the old testament they were into they were uh, in the form of about uh, 15 to 20 massively heavy very large scrolls and even the new testament books were on scrolls books as we know today they did not exist in the first century books started coming into existence only approximately in the second and third century when they discovered very very thin skins on which they could write till then they will they were writing on very thick sheets of skin which were dried processed dried polished made plain cut into strips and join with each other to make scrolls so even in the first century it was not possible for a person to have the whole bible in his home so as to study a given subject from the beginning up to the end there was another problem suppose you are studying the word salvation you have to read the whole of genesis you have to read the whole of exodus in fact in fact you have to read the whole of the bible to note down where these verses are found but then there was another problem old testament was not divided into chapters and verses when new testament believers acquired old testament the old testament was not only in a heavy and bulky and uh, unmanageable form but old testament books were not divided into chapters let alone divided into verses so if you find a verse on salvation how do you refer to it how do you say in genesis chapter 25 verse such and such even the new testament books were not divided into verses it took a long many centuries before the whole of the bible was divided into chapters and verses so the bulk of the bible was one problem the lack of chapter and verses division was another problem and then non availability of concordances was still another problem but by second and third century very thin sheets of uh, leather uh, they started making very thin sheets of leather and for the first time they were able to cut leather into rectangular thin rectangular sheets which were stitched on one side and for the first time books came into existence when they wrote on leather scrolls they were able to write only on one side but once 
books came and please let me remind you all the initial books were made of leather only thing thin leather which was stitched on one side they found out another thing now we can write on both sides of the paper let i mean both sides of leather so this way the arrival of books in second and third century for the first time made it convenient for people to copy and possess biblical books these leather books are usually known as codex plural codices actually the term codex can even refer to modern day books but usually in theology we restrict the word codex to certain specific meanings other meanings exist but we tend to use in those uh, with those meanings so codices came into existence in second and third century and by third century the chinese manufactured paper paper for the first time came into existence in second and third century when chinese manufactured it and with that thick paper also they started using thick paper so this way the path of systematic theology was slow and very torturous gradually chapters were introduced verses were introduced and using chapters and verses people started making concordances and strong's exhaustive concordances is a record in itself every word that is used in the bible and every occurrence of that word is found in strong's exhaustive concordance an equally useful one was young's analytical concordance but strong had one advantage strong gave a unique number to each and every word and since he gave a unique number to each and every word it became very easy for bible students to study the bible not only in english but also to check exactly which greek word has been translated in a given passage for example the word love greek has at least three words for love four for ex four words if we take expression for love into consideration when we read king james bible or any english bible or bible in any, any language other than greek we cannot know exactly which word was used in the original but if you have a strong concordance with you you would immediately know exactly which word has been used in a given passage so though young's analytical concordance and strong's exhaustive concordance are both extremely useful works strong's is of greater use to bible students and even after the arrival of electronic bibles and electronic concordances strong continues to be very strong in them because uh, as we start using an electronic bible if you check a word immediately it will say strong number such and such original greek word such and such root word such and such and the meanings such and such so this way development of systematic theology was a long laborious and torturous process systematic theology did not drop from the sky overnight that all of us should remember that is why we should give some time to study the history of christian doctrine i will not be teaching it as a part of systematic theology because history of christian doctrine is a separate subject in itself but if you are a person 
who gets involved in public witnessing if you are a person who gets involved in discussing the bible and theology with people of differing opinions for example jehova witnesses seven day adventists muslims then an acquaintance with the history of christian doctrines would be very beneficial because many muslims often claim that the doctrine of trinity was invented in 3rd century or 4th century or 5th or 6th the problem is much light was thrown on the doctrine of trinity in the 3rd century much additional light was thrown in the 4th century much additional light was thrown in the 6th century just because much additional light was thrown it doesn't mean that trinity originated in the 3rd or 4th or 5th or 6th century an understanding of the history of christian doctrine would help you to explain these things to to them you may ask okay brother johnson i understand that uh, it has taken much sifting sorting arranging classification and deduction to develop systematic theology so have we arrived at everything in systematic theology we need to understand that though we have arrived at core truths there are many areas of systematic theology on which studies are going on even now let me cite one area how old is the universe well most of the christians or a lot of christians will say that the universe is billions and billions of years old what does the systematic theology say conservative systematic theology says that the universe is less than 10000 years old there was an aggressive development of that portion of systematic theology from 1960 onwards it received much development in 1960s and also in 1970s now many of you who are listening to me you may say brother johnson we thought that you are a scientifically trained person and that you would know that the universe is billions of years old my dear friends that is what they teach in schools and colleges but the scripture is very clear in exodus and also in deuteronomy in 6 days he created the heavens the earth and everything in them please listen to me once again when you look at scriptures the scriptures make it very clear that the lord created the universe in 6 days and everything that is in them in 6 days and that 6 day creation is given in the bible and from that date we can calculate uh, up to today it comes to approximately 8 to 10000 years you may ask why there is such an uncertainty there is a little uncertainty because uh, the jews had a different way of calculation and uh, modern man has a different way of calculation so there is some uncertainty because of the way things are reckoned but the absolute maximum age of the universe based upon the bible based upon a right interpretation of the bible the absolute maximum age is 10000 years this fact this portion of systematic theology this portion of apologetics received a full development in 1960s and 1970s and uh, the two scientists one scientist and one theologian who developed it in a core form one was dr henry m morris and the other is john witcom morris and witcom developed this aspect 
you may say but brother they are going against science and uh, before going further let me hasten to tell you uh, i won't elaborate but just last month just last month scientists discovered that time is non linear which means that even if the universe is 10000 years old as the bible says it can easily look 10 100 or 1000 billion years old but it doesn't mean that what it looks is the real age the real age is approximately 10000 years only uh my first round of research for my phd was on the age of the universe but my professor was a non theist and therefore after two years of uh, research he did not allow me to proceed but i am very happy to tell you brothers and sisters that that area of systematic theology which was developed in 60s and 70s now it is being confirmed through empirical and also theoretical observations so let us leave that what i said is this systematic theology is an ever growing science theological science theology is also a science core areas are all very clear but there are many areas here and there on which studies are going on on which more and more clarity is coming up but since core areas are already clear in our classes we will be handling core areas and also some of the subjects which have become clear in the coming in the recent years so that much about introduction to systematic theology let us come now to an introduction to bibliology bibliology or that branch of theology which deals with bible exactly what the bible is exactly how we received it exactly who wrote it what was the role of the holy spirit and also how did we get all these books seeing that the first book was written 3500 years ago how can we be sure that we got an accurate copy of the bible or accurate copy of biblical books which were written new testament books were written 2000 years ago the first book of the first five books were written first five books and also job were written 1000 2000 3500 years ago how can we be sure that we have all of them in an accurate form in our hands so the study of these things comes under bibliology and bibliology bases itself upon two key verses there are hundreds upon hundreds of verses in the new testament and multiple hundreds upon hundreds of bible verses in the old testament related to the scripture but bibliology depends upon two or three key verses i will be mentioning them as we proceed the first verse is first peter 315 and i'm sure that those in terc are already familiar with first peter 315 which says that sanctify the lord god in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear if we have to answer our critics if we have to answer those who come to us with a spirit of inquiry with a spirit of criticism whatever kind of spirit they come we need to be ready and we can be ready only if our bibliology is ready if our bibliology is not ready then when a muslim comes and says hey lot of things about your isa nabi are found in quran also we may quickly say ha ah, oh yes there is holy spirit inspired revelation in your holy book also we have to know thank you for quoting 
uh, brother benner emmanuel uh, sanctify the lord god in your hearts that verse is quoted in the margin uh, to help those people who have a wide screen i i am speaking on a wide screen and i can see all these quotations on my right hand which is a great help to me so if we have to give a reply we need to know about bible that's why this is the first key verse in bibliology and the second verse we have already seen second timothy 2:15 study to show yourself approved unto a god a man who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and rightly dividing christians have been doing for last 2000 years and they have come to a very systematic and organized set of information related to god related to man sin salvation and all that but there is a problem and that should be clear to everyone when we hear theology everybody thinks only of one kind of theology the answer is no there are various kinds of theologies because though the bible commands god's children to develop to rightly divide the word of truth people who do not believe in the bible they also have tried to develop theology in fact in 1700s they challenged that the theology that we are developing and which you are saying about which you say that it is a heresy eventually it will be taught in your seminaries as divine truth so when i say theology i must remind you that i am talking about conservative theology you may ask johnson brother what is conservative theology uh to illustrate it <laughs> let me give you an example uh there is a hindu sanyasi he has written a very famous book known as autobiography of a yogi i um, i i think many of you might have seen this book in railway book stalls because it sells by hundreds of thousands the title is autobiography of a yogi this yogi has written more than 25 commentaries on the bible recently i purchased a two volume commentary on gospels the four gospels and the two volume commentary printed on pure art paper is about 4 kilograms in weight a christian book of that quality and that weight it would cost at least 6 uh, to 10000 rupees but these hindus are selling them for 400 rupees which is not even postage for that book do you know why the man who wrote autobiography of a yogi he claims that he has a special insight into the scripture what he has is his own version of systematic theology a 100% paganized systematic theology and using that systematic theology he has written 25 or so many commentaries on the bible and they are selling it cheap very cheap as i said it should cost 6 to 10000 rupees in an open market and they are giving away for 400 rupees for 400 you cannot buy a hard bound decent english bible and they are giving commentaries for 400 rupees why because they developed the systematic theology of the bible which is completely contrary to the bible and they want to propagate it 
they want your children and my children to read these commentaries and be become thoroughly paganized christians oh you may say brother johnson what are you saying our children are not going to be paganized come on what are you saying children from brethren families pentecostal families baptist families and also from other evangelical christian groups they are being paganized in india by the thousands every year i know because i work among students i speak in camps and conferences and during question answer hour many of these students pop up questions which shows that their theology has already been paganized a 100% so when i say systematic theology please do not assume that there is only one kind of systematic theology people have found that if you develop a theology then you can find very quick acceptance among christians and therefore each person is developing his own theology therefore brothers and sisters when we study systematic theology we have to make sure that the systematic theology is taught by a person who believes that the 66 books of the bible and only those 66 books are inspired by the holy spirit that they are infallible and inerrant that they are authoritative in all matters of faith and conduct only that kind of a person only the systematic theology produced by that kind of a person or taught by that kind of a person is related to bible or biblical the rest are paganized versions of theology uh, as i teach these uh, uh, these classes i might mention an occasional book which has become very popular among christians but which has been written by 100% paganized people or 100% heretics and believers do not even recognize these things and simply read those books and become heretics in the long run i thank god for the time that he gave me i have only two more minutes are left and uh, i request the admin to come online for concluding this class i i would not uh, take more time than what's what is given to me lord willing in the coming days we will go deeper into bibliology and as we go deeper you will understand how important bibliology is and that also bibliology from a strictly conservative point of view where you stick to 66 books as the only holy spirit inspired inerrant infallible word of god god bless all of you